and I had heard these heavy footsteps, boom, 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 running down about the balcony, and a pounding on the door. Oh, wow, what's that? I opened it, it was my partner. He said, the Bay Bridge collapsed. And I said, that's impossible, because I had worked on the bridge. I had been its maintenance engineer. I knew it you know, thoroughly by the back of my hand. You know? And he said, no, turn on the TV. And so I did. I went over and turned on the TV, and I saw the failure. And it was the last place in the whole length of the bridge that I would have guessed would have failed, because it was a braced tower. And that braced tower was designed back in the 30s to take all the longitudinal wind forces, and well, they had a seismic force too, and it, from, eight, from direction, so it was really sturdy. And the, the braced tower was still intact. As later, we found out that 40 bolts sheared, what we call sheared, and allowed a piece that was supporting the tower, uh, uh, supporting the uh, truss, uh, moved. And in the act of moving, it pulled some what we call stringers, longitudinal structures, off its seats and it went down. So those 40 bolts didn't do what they were supposed to do. <laughs> if they had been high strength bolts, it would not have happened. But on the East Bay span, uh, that was just so badly uh, overstressed in the earthquakes. And we talked about mm -hmm. geology. Now, on the East Bay span, everything is supported on mud, literally mud, and not very good. And uh, so that mud now shakes like a bowl of jelly and, uh, in an earthquake, and uh, it, it displaces. And that's what happened. There was a displacement between two piers, and that thing fell down. Earthquake hit, and I was just calling in my tow to say I was finished. And one of the other drivers who happened to be right at the break, he said, Rich, Rich, the bridge just collapsed. And this guy was known to be a joker. And I went, yeah, right, John and then silence, never got to talk to anybody else after that. I went to the, got on the bridge, and at that point, CHP kind of takes over, and they'll say, because, like, again, I didn't have any radio contact. They said, we need you to secure this on-ramp, we get this secured, and then we're gonna need to start moving cars off the bridge. So for about the next four and a half hours, I'd hook cars off and I'd drag them off the bridge, just drag them off the bridge. So we could open the bridge up, because think about it, people abandon their cars, and the, the bridge was just full of abandoned cars. It was like the dawn of the dead. When I'm, I'm sitting there and there's these people, with, and you know, you can't blame them, with these bewildered looks on their face just walking off the bridge. I was actually driving a tow truck that night that they installed that. There was an iron worker that worked on repairing it that was uh, also an artist as well. He fabricated it, and I remember working that night, and he drove in his pickup truck. They had a welder on the back. They stopped on the incline. They put some cones out behind it, and I thought, this is insane. What is he doing? They went over the side, and they welded the troll on it. 